Hello, I'm Marvin McKenzie. This is the introductory video for um, the series I'm going to do on how to prepare your own big game. This was actually a book that was written. It's going to come from a book that was written by my dad, Gary Kitchen. Mom and dad uh, divorced when I was a child, and I took my uh, stepdad's uh, name, McKenzie. But this is the uh, book prepared by my my dad Gary Kitchen and so I wanted to start with some introductory material about the author uh, the back of the book says Gary Kitchen was born in Longview Washington in 1939 his earliest recollection was his grandparents grocery store Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Baker owned and operated Baker's Corner in Longview Not long after this Gary's parents went into the grocery business at an er at a very early age Gary was helping his father at the meat count counter Gary's father, Elwood Kitchen, purchased a large service meat market in Oregon City, Oregon, and another in Lafayette, Oregon. Through Gary's school years, his parents owned and operated the Lyle Mercantile in Lyle, Washington. This is where he learned the basic fundamentals of meat cutting. Since then, Gary has worked in slaughterhouses on the kill floor, operated a farm slaughter truck, and has worked and managed large food chains such as Bayless Markets in Phoenix, Arizona, Albertsons, Safeway, Thriftway, and locker plants in the Pacific Northwest. Mr. Mr. Kitchen has a good knowledge of all aspects of meat processing and sincerely hopes that this book will help you in understanding the basic science of meat cutting. I want to go ahead and give um, information that's found, for instance, on his dedication and um, the title page. So his dedication, this book is dedicated to my parents for their faith in me, to Lonnie Roth, who gave me inspiration to write this book, to the Town and Country Market in White Salmon, Washington, and to the Washington State Game Department for their assistance and encouragement. The next page says how to prepare your own big game. This booklet is not preparing you to become a professional meat cutter, nor is it intended to, just a better understanding on how to do the job yourself and to get the best possible cuts of meat. With the rising cost of meat cutting and wrapping, you can save many dollars along with learning how to prepare your own game. In some parts of the United States, people pay as much as 18 cents to 20 cents a pound for this service. How to Prepare Your Own Big Game by Gary Kitchen. Step-by-step -step instructions on field dressing, cooling, aging, boning, cutting, and wrapping by an expert meat cutter. The copyright is uh, by Gary Kitchen in 1970 um, and it was published by Jensen Press in Hood River, Oregon. The Introduction. You could see old Mr. Sun starting to peek around the fringes of the surrounding mountains. There was an east wind blowing and it was cold. Winter sets in rather early in eastern Washington. This was opening weekend and the companion and I were on our way to meet a group of friends with whom we were to hunt this morning. As we pulled into the yard, we could see the hunt was already organizing. The hunt split into groups. We're going to hunt the mountains to the east of us. We spread out, making our way to the crest of the mountain. We were to meet in a cleared field on, at the top. As we made our way through the brush and scrub oak, we could hear the deer breaking from the canyon on the other side. This was where we planned to make an organized drive. As we gathered at our prearranged meeting place, our hunt organizer placed us at different intervals on both sides of the canyon. Some were to be near the bottom, others about halfway up, and some near the crest of the canyon. We had another party at the mouth of the canyon at different stations. As we proceeded down the canyon, you could catch a fleeting glance of a deer breaking for cover. Then when we had reached about two-thirds of the way down the canyon, I caught a glance of a deer that had started down toward the mouth of the canyon and then turned back toward the drivers. As my companion was stationed about halfway down, the deer ran into him. With a well-placed shot, he dropped a nice two-point buck, western count. The rest of the party converged on the spot where the deer had been killed, offering congratulations and what have you. Then one of the parties suggested that we had better get started so we could finish the drive. My companion just stood there with a very embarrassed look on his face and had to admit he did not know how to take care of his deer. This happens all the time. What if this man had been alone? He could have very well ruined some good meat. 